Java streams are a pretty powerful tool that allow you to process a collection of objects. This collection could be a collection of ints, a collection of booleans, characters, really anything. It could be in the form of an array list, a linked list. So let's check it out. Now to create a stream, we need to have a collection. Let's create a collection of numbers. In this case, it'll be in the form of an array. We'll give it the numbers one through six. Now typically, if I wanted to print out each element, I might use a for loop, or more specifically, a for each loop. So I'd iterate over numbers, and for each number, I'd print it out to the console. Now we can actually simplify this using a Java stream. Instead of using three lines of code, we'll use one line. Now a Java stream is not a data structure. It is simply a stream of incoming events. We see an element, operate on it, and then it's gone, unless we save it, which we'll get to later. To create a stream, we can use the stream function from the arrays class. We'll create a stream of our numbers, and so this will have an incoming stream where we look at each element, do something to it, that thing is printed out to the console. So we'll do that with system.out.println. So for each x, for each item in the list, we'll print it out. Now this is actually a lambda function. This is functional programming in Java. We're passing an anonymous function, a function that doesn't belong to a class and doesn't belong to something. It's just this function we've created and we're passing it into for each. Since there's only one line of code that we're essentially doing in this for each, we're printing it out to the console and it involves the singular input that we're inputting into the function, we can change this to using the method reference. So we can do system.out, double colon, print ln. This does the exact same thing and it's a little simpler. For each element, we're going to run this function with that element as input. We're gonna look at the element, do the processing on it, which is printing it out to the console, and then we're done with it. This does not modify numbers in any way. And it's a little bit cleaner than this for each loop up here. Let's comment out this for loop and run it. We'll see each element printed out to the console. One through six. I'm also running Java 16. Anything over Java 8 should work fine. Now this is functional programming in Java, but it's actually pretty popular on the front end. Another thing that's popular on the front end are buttons. Do me a favor, make sure it works, click it. It should be hooked up to the back end, but you never know, so just click it one time. And if it's already gray and it's not this red button, then you're good to go. It's already been tested. So with Java Streams, we were able to print something out to the console. What else can we do? Well, let's say we want to filter out certain numbers. We can do dot filter and enter a function, a lambda function, to filter out numbers we don't wanna see. Let's filter out the odd numbers. We'll only want to keep the numbers that are even. We'll do x, x mod two equals zero. This will keep track of the items that are even. Then we can collect these items into a list. We could also collect them into an integer array, but let's do a list for now. We can use collectors dot to list and then save the output to a list, a list of integers. Now since numbers has ints, but we want to create a list of integers, we can use dot boxed in order to do this. It'll box it into an integer so that we can stuff it in our list. Instead of doing something like this, we could do a for loop. But here, it's really easy to see that this is a chain of operations. We take a number, we filter it, we make it into integers, and then we collect the results into a list. We can also do something similar for list data structures. Let's create a new list. It'll be a list of strings, specifically words, and we could make this a new array list, a new linked list, and then individually add each element, but we can also use the static of function from list, and we can just add our elements to create an immutable list. We'll add apples, the empty string, oranges, and a season, winter. To create a stream from a list, we just do dot stream. Then we can do similar operations. We can do that filter operation where we could filter out the empty string. As long as X is not empty, we'll keep it. And maybe we'll print it to the console. So for each element, we'll print it out. 
let's separate this out. We'll have our array at the top, and we'll have our list stuff down here. Now let's say we wanted to check if a given letter existed in any of our words. We could do something like for string s in words, if s dot contains this letter, let's say g, we could return true. Otherwise, if we go through the entire for loop, we would return false. We could do something like this, but another option to simplify this Again, is to use Java streams. We could do words.stream, and we have access to something called any match. If any of the words in the list have this certain property, we'll return true. In that case, that property is whether it contains this G as a substring. So we'll say whether X contains G. We'll save it as has G. One line instead of four or five lines. Another thing we can do is map a function on top of all of the elements. We'll create a new list of lowercase words. For each word in our stream, we'll make each lowercase. So we'll take our element, element dot to lowercase. Then we can save the output in a list. Now we have a list of lowercase words and we can print each of these to the console. For each system dot out, print ln. Now with the stream, we do not modify the original words. We look at each word, do an operation, and then we have the option to save the results here with this to list. That operation might be filtering the list, performing a function on the list like to lowercase, to uppercase, multiplying it by two. We could check whether a given item matches a condition. Lots of different options here. In fact, we can actually create a parallel stream and do the operation in parallel. While you might not consider it a collection, a string can also be used with streams. Let's take the string, hello world. We can create an integer stream with dot chars. This int stream is the int representation of each character and we can operate on it just like a regular stream. Now there's so much more with streams. This is just an introduction. We can create a new stream of distinct elements, no duplicates. We can sort the items in a stream. We can collect the items into a new data structure after performing the operations. With streams, what we really get to do is create a chain, a chain of operations. It's a pipeline that each element goes through and then we either save the output or we don't. Now that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Happy coding.